AutoCAD is a very accurate drafting tool. As you can see with things like Polar and Ortho and Snap and Grid, you can draw very, very accurately to known points. Everything that you draw has a group of object snaps associated with it. These are known as O-snap. Now you'll notice I've left Polar on down here on the status bar. I always leave Polar on. It's one of the ones that I always use when I'm drawing in AutoCAD all of the time. So Polar and Dynamic, you'll notice, are left on. I'm also going to switch on O-snap. Now, to set your object snap settings, you need to right click on the O snap button and you can switch them on and off here in the list, but you can also use the settings here. So, after you've right clicked on the O snap button, on the menu there, go to settings and it brings up the drafting settings dialog box. Object snap is on. You'll notice object snap tracking is not on yet. We haven't looked at object snap tracking yet. What you do with these object snaps is you switch on the ones that you want to be switched on all of the time. You'll notice I've got endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection and extension switched on all the time. The other object snaps I don't use as much, so we can use another method called override snap, which I'll show you in a minute, to set those up when we need them. So I'll click on OK now. And the good thing is all of those object snaps are always on as long as my O snap button down here is on in the drafting settings. So I can just right click now, go to recent input. There's a line there. I don't even have to go to the line icon on the ribbon. And I'm going to draw a line, but I'm going to draw a line using object snaps. So if I go here and hover over that line there, can you see there's a midpoint snap? And it sort of snaps to it. It kind of magnetizes to it which is wonderful. That's a thing called auto snap that Autodesk have developed over the years. And the lovely thing is, is I can hover there and it just snaps automatically. I left click to select that midpoint. If I come down here, or let's say I go over here, end point there. But if I come down here, I've got a midpoint there, or I've got an end point there. Or I could go to a midpoint on this line, maybe. If I go there and click, it goes exactly to that midpoint. I press enter to finish. And there you go. That's how object snaps work. They work very, very well. They're very, very quick and easy to use. Now, I've got lots of other snaps switched on, but also lots of other snaps switched off. What I'm going to do now is just pan across slightly using the pan, remember, on how to use the mouse. And I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm going to go here to the circle, click on the flyout. And what I want here is a center radius. So when I click there like that, I get center radius, and there's the center point for the circle. Now, I'm just going to draw it anywhere over here on the right. So click and just drag that. I'll give it an exact radius of, say, 1.5, because I know that will fit on the screen quite nicely. Now, if I want to draw from the center point of the circle, let's say, if I go to the line command, I can go there. Or, remember, right click, recent input, line, much quicker. I can hover on the edge of that circle. I don't even have to go into the center to get the center snap. So when I click now, there's my center snap. And I can drag that to an endpoint snap there, click, enter to finish. Not the most perfect looking drawing in the world, but you see how that works. Now, circles also have another type of snap known as a quadrant. Now, I might not have wanted to draw that line from the center snap to that endpoint there. So I'm going to delete that line and I'm going to use the quadrant snap, but this time I'm going to use my override snap to do it because quadrant snap isn't switched on in my object snap settings. So I'll right click, recent input, line. Specify first point, I want the quadrant, I want this quadrant here on the left hand corner, so to speak, of the circle. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. I'm gonna hold down the shift key on the keyboard and right click on the mouse. And there is my shortcut override object snap menu. Quadrant is just there. Click on Quadrant. There's my Quadrant Snap. Even though it's not part of my Object Snap settings, it's an override snap. I click there, go to the end point there, enter to finish, and I've drawn it slightly differently. So that's how useful those object snaps are. They are so important to draw accurately. So you'll notice now I've left Object Snaps on with the set Object Snaps that I've ticked in the box. And I will use those constantly as I draw in AutoCAD Electrical. It's rare that we will need to do any 3D drafting in AutoCAD Electrical, but if we do, 
there is the opportunity to use 3D object snaps. Again, these are down here. So if I switch them on, like so, 3D object snap on, on the command line, right click, and you can see that we've got some 3D object snaps, vertex, midpoint on edge, center of face, and so on. If I go to settings, you'll notice I can switch those on and off. So we've got vertex, center of face. What I'm going to do is switch on midpoint on edge as well. I'll click on OK now, and you'll notice that 3D object snap is on on the status bar. Now, I'm going to quickly draw a rectangle. That's up here on the draw panel. It's right here. There's the rectangle command. Come into the drawing area, click to specify a corner point. And I'm just going to drag that like so, and I'm going to make that rectangle say 4, and then press the tab by 2, like that. So you're just inputting and tabbing between the two values in the boxes, and press Enter. There's my small rectangle. Now, what I need to do is change the view of that and go to what they call an isometric view to show you the 3D settings for this. Now, if I go over here to the navigation bar and click on View Cube like that, it gives me the View Cube and I can click on a corner of the cube and it then shows me an isometric view. Can you see how the cube rotates? And now my rectangle is an isometric. Now, you probably wouldn't do this in electrical because a lot of the time, things like schematics, panel views and so on, they tend to be flat 2D drawings. But if you did need 3D, this is a useful setting to know. Now, I'm going to extrude that rectangle to make it into a 3D solid. So I'll just type the word extrude because I'm not actually in any 3D environment at the moment. I'm just in a flat 2D environment. So I'm going to type the commands. So there's extrude there. I'll click on extrude on the menu. And once I do that, it takes a few seconds. You'll see in the bottom left corner, it's loading the modeler DLLs. It's loading my 3D modeling settings. I can select the rectangle using the pick box and press Enter to confirm that selection. Now, when I do that, as I move up, can you see I'm extruding it into a 3D solid? I'm making it into a rectangular solid. So the height of that extrusion, I'll say 2 and press Enter. So I've made it 2 by 2 there, and it's 4 long along the length. So there is my rectangular 3D solid. Here's the issue. It's now a 3D solid. If I hold down Shift and press down on the wheel of the mouse, I can orbit, and you can see, look, that is actually a 3D solid. And then I release Shift and release the mouse, and I can go back to my view. If I want to draw a line, so I'll just right-click, Recent Input, remember, line is still there, and I want to draw a line, let's say, from that midpoint there, it's not a midpoint snap anymore, is it? It's a midpoint on a face. So that 3D object snap that I set, if I hover there, 3D midpoint, can you see that snap? And click, and then I come this way, hover again, 3D midpoint, click, and enter to finish. The reason you have 3D object snaps is they are different. They're not a midpoint. If I went to the top view here on the view cube, I'll just rotate that around so it's in the right orientation. That is a 2D line drawn on the top face of a 3D solid. But looking at it in the top plan view, you wouldn't know that, would you? That's why you need 3D object snaps to work in the 3D environment. Now, I'm not saying that you would work in 3D, but if you do, the snaps are there to be used. In order to use object snap tracking down here on the status bar, just click on it to switch it on. You can see object snap tracking is now on. If I right click on O snap and go to settings, you'll notice that box there is now ticked, object snap tracking as well. So you can switch it on in the OSnap dialog box, and if I right-click on OTrack and go to settings as well, you'll notice exactly the same dialog box. So the right-click and the settings on OSnap or OTrack is the same. Why do we use OTrack? We use OTrack to find object snap tracking points that we don't want to have to draw construction lines to. So how does that work? Well, with OTrack switched on, I can hover over a point and find a corresponding snap without actually snapping to it. Let me give you an example. If I right click and go to recent input, you'll notice because I've gone into a new drawing, there's no line or circle there. So I am actually going to have to go up to the ribbon this time to draw a circle. Remember that new drawing, new settings on the recent input. Center radius. So I've done a circle center radius on the fly out there. It's asking me for the center point for my circle. If I hover over that midpoint snap there and don't click on it, that's the trick with OTrack. You've got to make sure that you don't click on these object snaps. 
And then I'm going to go up to here to the midpoint on this line and hover there as well. As I drag downwards now, the polar tracking will kick in because I've got polar switched on. That's the green dashed line. But as I drag downwards, look, I've got a corresponding intersection of the other midpoint snap on the left. So if I now left click, that is the center of my circle. So I'll make that one radius there. And there's my circle there. So basically what I've done is added that circle for my symbol. It's a very clever tool, O-Track. You use it in combination with O-Snap. Now, another one that I could do there perhaps, I might want a much smaller circle here to indicate perhaps a point that I snap to. So what I'll do is I'll draw another circle. The good thing is I can right click now and repeat circles straight off the shortcut menu. Center point, I'm going to hover on that end point snap there. I'm going to hover on that end point snap there. I'm not clicking, you'll notice. As I drag to the left, there's the intersection right there. Click, and I take that little circle there. I'm going to make that 0.05 as the radius. Only needs to be a small circle like that to indicate a snap point. I can then use the center snap of that circle to draw my lines from and to if I need to. But as you can see, I've just made a perfect electrical label that might go as a tag somewhere on a wiring diagram, on a panel diagram, on a schematic diagram. So that's O-Track for you. Dynamic UCS, or DUX for short, is again another 3D setting that we would use in our drafting settings. So what I've done, there's my rectangle, and I've set it up in an isometric view using the view cube. We'll quickly do an extrude again, just to make it into 3D, like so. We'll select our rectangle like we did before, press enter to confirm, and I'll drag that upwards, and put the height of the extrusion this time as 1.5, just for a bit of change there instead of 2. And I'll just pan that a little bit, like so. Now, when I'm drawing in 3D, I might want to place something on a face of a 3D object rather than on a corner or a midpoint or a vertex. So what I do is I switch ducks dynamic UCS on. Now what I can do, if I want to draw a circle, let's say, on the center of this face here on the end, I can click on the circle command here, center radius, and if I hover over that face, can you see it go dashed and highlight? So what I can do there now is I can specify a center point for that circle on that face, and if I hover on that midpoint there, again you'll see regular midpoints still work, hover on that midpoint there and drag across. When I get those object snap tracking points in the center of that face, the circle is then drawn on that face. So if I make that 0.5, there's my circle on the center of that face there. I might use that for something like a press pull command. So I'll type in press pull because I haven't got my 3D icons or settings up at the moment. And what I'll do is I'll just hover inside that circle and click and I can drag another 3D solid out like that and press enter to finish. So you can see there that I can generate things very quickly on faces of objects using dynamic UCS. UCS stands for user coordinate system. So what you're doing is you're specifying dynamic user coordinates on the face of a 3D object. Again, we won't often use 3D in AutoCAD Electrical, but if you do, you now know that that facility is there to use and you can use it at your leisure.